Yep, go ahead. Hey, so I'm Eric Lopez, this is Tony and Caleb, and we are asking question low emission scooter. Uh, so a little background, as global carbon emissions rise over years, is higher demand for uh, renewable energy and low emission transportation. So our project focuses on uh, working on this Yamaha Neo uh, 50 cc scooter, uh, modifying it so it can, um, we can use alternative fuels like uh, Uh, first, we need to develop a test bed. Uh, the test bed consists of a scooter and a scooter dang um, and a monitor. Uh, it needs to measure the air intake temperature, uh, exhaust gas temperature, head temperature, along with the forward speed engine torque, uh, exhaust composition, fuel consumption, and the air conditioning and head temperature. After we finish phase one, that's where we will enter phase two and modify the scooter even more to um, receive uh, modified qualities. And this is the sketch of our final design which is just a scooter attached to the uh, anemometer, but we're going to uh, attach the sensors, um, and all of them are going to meet up at a data acquisition chassis where it will uh, fed into a laptop with data or software, and you just switch that to the place. Um, to measure the temperature, we can use two tech thermocouples. Uh, one will go on the exhaust ports, one will go on the uh, air intake codes, and one in the cooling um, to measure the Bosch oxygen sensor, we're going to attach um, the sensor also to the exhaust ports, as well as and pair that with um, AEM digital air fuel gauge to get a true reading of the air condition. Um, after that, we're going to attach an MRAC sensor to gas analyzer to also to exhaust ports and uh, in that hole there, and that will measure the um, composition of fuel exhaust. So in addition to our requirements and the specifications, uh, we are looking to size a digital servo motor. On the upper left, we're connecting it to the throttle body to automate it, to have uh, computerized inputs to achieve a certain uh, throttle position opening. And then on the right side is a crankshaft position sensor. Uh, the scooter doesn't utilize a crankshaft position sensor. It uses a capacitive inductance uh, emission system. And so integrating the CPS will give us more accurate uh, data such as engine RPM, uh, speed and cylinder position. And one of the main components of our system for the test bed is the uh, Mustang uh, dynamometer. And this uh, will provide a, a speed uh, RPM and allows us to apply a load to the scooter and also allow for the scooter to have a bed to operate on. So for the timeline, uh, we divide the project into three phases, which is design, build, and test. So for the fourth quarter, in which we will focus on the design, so designs for the different various components is go going to be made with the final objective in mind. Uh, so by the end of this quarter, uh, we should finish uh, all the designs for the data acquisition system, uh, the throttle position control, and the dynamometer. So in the following quarter, Mm, uh, we're going to build everything, and along along the way, uh, we're going to figure out a way to talk to the onboard ECU so that we can have access to the engine map, uh, and also we would like to uh, control the duty cycle on the spark spark plug, so we will have the ability to run bioethanol and biodiesel in the future. So in the last quarter, uh, what we'll do is just uh, testing fuel other than gasoline, like I said just now, uh, the biodiesel and bioethanol. Uh, and hopefully, in the end, we can determine the ideal operating range for the low emission adults. Uh, so for the throttle system, we sized out three different servo options. Um, one was hobby, the other one was commercial, one was, one was industrial. Um, and then we measured the force from the spring attached to the throttle body to find a servo with accurate torque rating. Uh, we settled down with the hobby servo, because uh, I had more enough torque rating at 25 gram per centimeter. Uh, attached it to the throttle body um, and rotated the air intake valve by uh, actuating the servo through an Arduino microcontroller. Uh, the scooter would accelerate as the air intake valve would uh, rotate, open and close. However, there's some uh, fluctuations, and so Right now, we're still troubleshooting that by uh, measuring the voltage output of the servo uh, with an oscilloscope. You may see if uh, external power supplies need to power the servo. 
Right, so the progress on the dynamometer, again, just reiterating, it uh, measures the speed, RPM, and allows us to apply the load. Uh, uh, we found three different options for data uh, acquisition, and one of them, one of the companies is uh, Dynomite, and the other one is Mustang, which is the manufacturer of the dyno that we currently have. And then lastly, it's just uh, currently all, uh, manually operating it uh, with uh, no software at all. And we also review schematics for our current system to see if we can integrate into the control panel uh, data, data integration and that data logger. So for the crankshaft position sensor, uh, we looked at three different options, uh, one of them being an inductive sensor, and then also a optical sensor, and lastly the one we chose, which is a hall effect. Uh, sensor, which converts a uh, magnetic field into a uh, voltage reading. And so we are looking to see if uh, the, uh, we, can in we can integrate this into the scooter itself, find a way to plug it into the data acquisition to uh, give readings for performance testing that the biofuel is out of the way. So, Dr. Progress, uh, for the definition of the system, uh, we were able to come up with three like, feasible plans to build the data acquisition system. So the first one is going to be a, a ground up Arduino system. And the second one is uh, going to be a national instrument integrated system with left view. And the last option is going to use the aftermarket uh, data logger system. Uh, and on top is the requirements, requirements we need to consider uh, for the design. And through online research, uh, we have found like, various solutions to the requirements. So moving into our budget, uh, we set a preliminary budget of $3,000. Uh, so starting at the dynamometer and the data acquisition options uh, for the dynamometer, uh, the first option that I mentioned before, uh, manually operating it, uh, there won't be a cost to this because this will just rely on the uh, DAP software, which we'll mention in a few moments. Uh, the second option from uh, the company Dynolite, they provide uh, software for $1,000 and uh, 28 channel data acquisition for uh, $4,000. And this will provide its own set of uh, challenges because this is aftermarket uh, software that we're trying to integrate into a uh, different company's uh, data monitor. And then going to the third option, which is most expensive at $15,000, is uh, actually uh, Mustang's uh, data acquisition software itself which uh, was not previously bought with the dyno uh, when it was purchased six years ago. And as I said before, there was a hobby grade servo, a mid grade servo, industrial grade servo. And we ended up going with the hobby grade since it was the least expensive and had more than a torque rate. And you might need a uh, torque rate of 36 kilograms per second or 110 kilograms per second. So that's the best option. So in order to build the, uh, the data acquisition system, uh, the cost for each of the options is listed. Uh, as you can see, we have a very cost-efficient option, which is the first one, the ground-up Arduino system. Uh, however, the lower cost does come with uh, more difficulties in the operation, especially when dealing with the noise in the voltage signals. Uh, of course, also we want to like, avoid uh, high cost, which is, which is by using the national instruments in the system with that view. Mm, so compare these three options. Uh, so option two is like more reliable option. So just uh, some of our researches, uh, uh, resources. We have uh, five team members, a couple of us taking two units, a uh, couple of, of us taking three units, and uh, one of us taking five units. Uh, that right under uh, 200 hours so far to date. And our advisors are Professor uh, Rankin and also Dr. Just uh, showing a subsystem breakdown that we have, uh, the whole um, system for our test bed and uh, uh, dyno is based on uh, uh, data acquisition, so that is the heart of the system. And just basing off of the PL1 data logger, uh, we split our teams, we just split into three sub-teams, which is deals with the scooter, the throttle body, and the dyno. And in the scooter, uh, we measure the uh, temperature through the thermocouples, air fuel ratio through the uh, oxygen sensors, and also uh, the fuel injection and the ignition timing through the uh, potentially the crankshaft position sensor. For the throttle body, uh, as mentioned, uh, we're looking to automate it 
So we're exploring the servo, measuring the speed and the torque, and also looking at the EPA driving schedules, which will uh, be the information for us to determine what kind of driving styles, uh, whether it be uh, highway, uh, stop and go traffic, or urban. And also, uh, the dyno currently is a pretty much a standalone piece of equipment. Um, and we're also looking to automate that piece of equipment as well and hopefully have that uh, input data into our data acquisition.